Hey guys, this here is my design of a coil gun, which is a project I was preparing for a long time and I finally made the first version. But before we start I have to warn you that this is a quite dangerous project for two reasons. First of all, obviously this is firing projectiles at high speed. And second of all, this is working at very high voltage, around 500 volts. So please be careful if you want to make this same project. So use proper tools, stay insulated and never touch the exposed connection while the board is powered on. And also make sure that you fully discharge these capacitors each time because this can store a huge amount of charge. Ok, so my design is a bit special and you will see that it's made of separated PCBs for each segment, for each stage. So if you want more speed or more power, you can just add another stage. And each segment PCB works by its own because it has the capacitor, the power control, the coil and the bullet detector. So it's very easy to add more stages. Ok guys, so what do you think? Will this be able to pass through some cardboard box? That seems quite easy, right? But how about some 4mm plywood sheet like this one? Or what about some plexiglass like this one? Or what about some MDF of 3mm like this one? Which is a very strong material, so if you want to know, stick till the end of the video to find out. And by the way, below in the description you have everything that you need to make this project, such as my schematics, the PCB design, the part list and so on. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. I had these big capacitors in my workshop for more than 2 years and that's when I decided to make a coil gun. But since this is a complex and more dangerous project, every time I had free time I was making tests for the MOSFETs control or maybe IGBTs or tyristors, the coil configuration and the amount of windings to see if I should go with high voltage or maybe low voltage control, the bullet detection circuit and so on and finally made these PCBs. As you can see my design is a bit special and is made out of multiple PCBs. We have this first main board and the rest are merging together to create the entire gun. The main PCB must be the first stage because it has the power supply connection and the firing push button. And then all the rest of the PCBs are exactly the same but the more stages we put more speed will the projectile get. In this way you can make your coil gun to have any amount of stages that you want, just by adding more PCBs with the same circuit. If you want to make the same project, you can get my Gerbil files for both PCBs from below. And then you can go to PCB way and order the same boards. So click the code now button and add the settings. In my case I wanted them to be black and I've ordered 10 PCBs. Then you save to cart and upload the Gerber files that you have just downloaded from my website. You make the payment and in around 7 days I receive the boards to Spain and they look amazing. And remember that you need 2 files, one for the main board and the other files for the segment PCB. Each of this call gun segment can work by its own because it already has the detection and the power control circuit which is not affected by the rest of the call gun and we will see how this works in a moment. Ok, so as you can see here on my table, this is all that we need to make one segment, which is not that much. But since I want to have multiple stages, this project needs a lot of components, so before we start assembling the PCBs, generating high voltage, making tests and so on, let me first explain you how a basic coil gun works and in which way we can implement it. A coil gun is based, well, on a coil, obviously. When we apply current to this coil, a magnetic field will be created around it. The more amount of loops we have and the bigger is the current value, the stronger will be the magnetic field. So for that we have to take in account the wire thickness, its resistance, the amount of loops of the coil and the voltage that we apply to that coil. This magnetic field will attract a metal projectile that we have on one side. This projectile must be ferromagnetic, otherwise the magnetic field won't attract it. But here appears the first problem. The created magnetic field is equal on both sides of the coil, on the left side and on the right side. So the projectile is attracted from the left side, 
but once it passes the middle of the coil, it will be attracted backwards by the right side of the magnetic field. So what the projectile will do is to oscillate a little bit till it stops exactly in the middle of the coil. So here I'm making some tests and I apply around 60 volts to my coil and record it in slow motion. As you can see, the projectile is attracted, but it will oscillate inside and get stuck in the middle. Only if I briefly touch the coil, it will fire the projectile on the other side. And that's what we want. So why is that? Well, what we want is to cut off the magnetic field exactly when the projectile is getting past the middle of the coil. In that way it accelerates, we stop the magnetic field and the projectile will keep going forward. And instead of just one coil, we can add multiple coils. So the bullet will be accelerated by the first stage, and when it gets out of the first coil, we stop the first magnetic field and activate the second magnetic field, and this will accelerate the bullet even more. And then we can do the same with the third stage and so on. And as you can see, the more stages we have, the faster the bullet can go. Each of these small PCBs represents one stage, and each will have its own coil, its own projectile detector and the power control. So by placing them in series, we can get any amount of stages for my coil gun. But how can we detect when the bullet is passing the middle of the coil? Well, for that we use phototransistors like this one here. On one side we have the infrared light, and in front of it we have a phototransistor, which will get activated when it's touched by the infrared light. So here I have that setup on my breadboard, supply at 5 volts, and the LED and the detector are face to face. So obviously when I place something in between, as you can see on the oscilloscope, the output will be deactivated, and when I remove the blocking object, the output is back again. So what we can do is to place this setup along the coil gun tube, just at the output of each coil. So like that we can detect when the projectile will exit that coil because it will be blocking the light from the infrared LED and deactivate the phototransistors. So we place this LED and the phototransistors on the exit of the coil. Since the projectile is pretty much a bit longer than the coil, it will exit on the other side, while the left end is still before the middle of the coil. At this point the phototransistor gets triggered, because the light from the LED can reach it anymore, because the bullet is blocking the light. So we can get this signal from the detector and apply it to a control circuit, that will control a thyristor. And this thyristor component is connected to the coil, so we can turn on and off the power, and with that we turn on and off the magnetic field. When we detect the bullet, we cut off the power from the first stage and continue to the next stage, and that's it. That's how this is done. The circuit that I have for this coil gun segment is something like this. I have the thyristor connected to the coil. Its gate is connected to this BJT transistor, which is controlled by the infrared sensor output. The circuit is supplied with around 450 volts DC, and we'll see how to get that voltage in a moment. So if you want to make such project, please be careful working with high voltages, because it could hurt you really bad or even worse. So use proper tools, stay insulated and never touch the high voltage parts. So to get 450 volts, we can use this kind of inverter modules. There are all kinds and sizes for such modules, but in my case, I want to use this one which is a bit bigger. We need it to be bigger because I want to have multiple stages, so we need more power in order to fill all the capacitors. This module can be supplied with 12 volts, and it will give around 300 volts AC, but it will get rectified with this full bridge rectifier, so we can get around 400 volts DC more or less. To store all the charge and then release it at once, we need to use these huge high voltage capacitors. And each segment will have one. Capacitors can charge with high voltage very fast and discharge almost instantly, without damaging themselves, so this will be a way better solution than using batteries. So that's why we get the power from the battery first, we increase the voltage and we store the charge inside of the capacitors. And then we release it all at once into the coil, creating a very powerful magnetic field. Ok guys, so this is pretty much all that we need to make such project. So we need the PCBs, obviously, the high voltage capacitors, and we also need some thyristors. 
we need some infrared LEDs and some phototransistors. We also need some small BJT transistors. And the rest are just some resistors and some LEDs. And we also need the copper coils. And to make this you can download from below my 3D design. Remove these supports and you will be left with this support like this. And then you can make around 150 loops using thick copper wire that could withstand enough current. And once you have all the loops, you can add some captain tape on top so the coil will stay that way. Or if you think that is too much work, you can find these coils to buy on the internet. Then we also need some powerful diodes and some push buttons to fire the gun. On the other side we need a high voltage module and maybe some 3S batteries, or even better a battery socket like this one. As projectiles, I will be using some 6 to 7 mm metal rods that you could cut around 2 cm and maybe also smooth the edges. As the gun barrel, I will use an 8 mm metal tube. It would be better to use a plastic tube so there will be less magnetic attraction and also less friction with the bullet. You also have to make some holes on this tube from side to side. And the space between these holes is the same as the space on the segment PCB. And through these holes we add the infrared LED and the sensor, so like that we can detect when the bullet is passing through. Ok guys, so let's assemble this coil gun. The first part is to assemble the main segment. The circuit for this part is a bit different and this is the schematic. This PCB has two stages and we have the same power control as before, but now the thyristor is activated with a push button. This PCB also has the input of 450 volts and 12 volts from the battery pack. And as you can see, the PCBs have exposed copper, so we can merge them together with solder. So we put them like this and we solder the connection. We have three connections on the top side and one more on the back. So I place the PCB flat on the table and join this part together with the next segment using some solder and some solid wire. Now the first segment is in place. I add two more segments for now and we'll see later if we can add more. Now I have the PCB ready for the components. First we add the huge capacitors and make sure that it will be on the bottom part of the PCB because on the top part we will have the coils. Also follow the indicators on the PCB in order to know which one is positive and negative. Then I solder the diodes. You will see that one diode can go through because we have the capacitor on the other side, so we have to solder it like this. And then I solder all the resistors for the first and second stage. I also add a small BJT transistor for the second stage. Then I add all the LEDs, but I don't solder the infrared LED for now and the phototransistor because we will do that after we add the coil. The next step is to add the thyristors, and they have the pin connections labeled on the PCB, so don't put them backwards. Now we can solder the coils, so measure the wire length and clean out the enamel from the wire. Then you cut it to size and solder this coil on its holes. Now we can measure the LED and the phototransistor height and solder them in place so they will be at the height of the coil tube. Also make sure that the infrared LED is face to face with the phototransistor. I supply the board at 12 volts for a moment and as you can see, when I rotate the tube so the light can pass, the red LED will turn on, and that's indicating that the thyristor is active. On these three pins I solder this display module, and this is a high voltage indicator, and it will show us the capacitor voltage. So the first and the second stage are ready. I supply 12 volts to the PCB on these pins. I also connect the high voltage transformer to the PCB, but I don't supply it yet. Then I add this push button as a trigger and we are ready to fire. I place a projectile at the input of the tube. And now I connect the transformer to 12 volts, and we can see on the small display how the capacitors are charging up to almost 500 volts. And now I press the button.
and that was a lot of power and with only two stages. It went through this cardboard box and that's amazing. And this here is a second attempt. So the projectile is fired away so it works. It's time to add the next stages. These connections on the PCB are not just for support. They also carry 450 volts to the next stages, so make sure that you don't touch these pads while the gun is powered on. This is the design of the PCB and as you can see, I've used thick enough tracks, so they could carry enough current without burning out. So I soldered the next stages as I did with the first ones, the resistors, the thyristors and the coils. So now I have 5 stages, so we can make another test. And as you can see, if I rotate the tube, each of the red LEDs will turn on, because we have a pair of infrared LEDs and a phototransistor for each hole. You could also add some hot glue to keep the LEDs in place if you want. And this gun needs a support, but I'll do that in a future video. Maybe a 3D printed support, that would be very cool. So I add another projectile. I put this cardboard box in front of the gun. I connect power to the high voltage module and as you can see, we charge up the capacitors up to around 500 volts. And now we fire. And this is amazing, it passed through both sides of the cardboard box and I've got to say it looks pretty fast and also a bit dangerous. With 5 stages it is definitely faster, so imagine when I get 10 stages. Now here we have another test and once again it passed through both sides of the box. But this time I want to fire it at some plywood. And there you have it once again, amazing! It passed through without any problems and this is a 4mm plywood. This thing is very powerful so please be careful. I can't believe that it passed through this wood board so easy. Let's fire it again. So much power. Now let's fire it at some plexiglass. And once again it went through without problems. And the final attempt was using 3mm MDF board, so guess what? Once again it passed through without any problems and this is a quite strong material and it also made such a clean hole. Obviously you can also get more stages and make it of 8, 9 or 10 or even more stages if you want, but I guess there will be a speed limit given by the speed of the component's commutation. Since you now have my design of the separated stages, you can always solder more and more if you want. But even so, the bullet is very fast. So guys I hope that you like this project and have in mind this is the first version. In a future video I want to make a case for the electronics, create a support for the gun and give it a better look, so stay tuned for that. If you like this video consider giving me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey so one more video that ends, I hope that you like it. Ok so listen, if you want to buy my merch, my t-shirts, you have the links below for my shop and I promise that I will make more designs. And also maybe you would comment below which one you like more and what more designs you would like to see because in that way I could start designing them and post my new t-shirts. So thank you for all the support and I'll see you in the next video.